is what I mean by I. So that is what I'm talking about. When I talk about then, knowledge then, of the experience, I'm just talking off. about the experience in and of itself, just describing the experience, not making any inferences I, outside of the description, just describing. And that, for me, and, that, and, that, and look, for you, you can deny that. You can say, no, that doesn't count as knowledge. And I don't really know how I would convince you to to allow that to count as knowledge, right? That would just be... You know, your, you know, what's, understanding what's the justification? of knowledge, right? For it to be knowledge, knowledge there must be a justification. Just to just appeal to the state of affairs, you're, you're basically saying the fact for the fact, or no, the, the justification for the fact is the fact. Which, like, how does that, how is that a justification? Like, I don't know, like, maybe, I guess, maybe, maybe you could maybe sort of, in some sense, view it as, like, I would, see, I wouldn't even, see, like, I think, like, granting it being some kind of foundation at this point of view, right? is like defeats the sort of objective of it right the, like the point of this is to show that like this isn't like this isn't about like a failure in reasoning right because this isn't about some direction of reasoning this is about the platform from which we reason from now our reasoning can be incorrect but no matter which direction we take we will always be stepping off from the platform and it's that what i'm trying to point to here is to say that the platform itself must exist for us to even step off of it in any way. In even some sense, in, in even some even sense, it's, in, in, in some sense, it's almost like the claim that you're making about God, right? But like, it seems as though like the leap that's being made with the God claim is much larger than the leap that's being made with the um with the with the mind claim, right? With the with the reason, because it it does seem as though we can step off without an appeal to god right we can step off from some non-god based platform right like at least i i say we can right you you maybe might disagree but i say that we can step off from the platform which doesn't contain a god but i i i, I what i what i also say is we can't step off from no platform right there's nothing to step off from how do we step off at all that's what i'm kind of point pointing to and and that seems to be more actual, like actually relevant, right? That like you seem to be like saying the platform needs to be a certain color, or the yeah. platform needs to be a certain way. And I'm like, well, no, the platform just needs to be there, right? That we can have something to step off from, and that like we can then look at like how that platform got there, all of those things afterwards, right? But um, but our reasoning needs to have that that you know, that existence to even be there for for us to reason in any in any direction. But the, it doesn't seem to work with the God claim because we can't, I, I, I say we can step off from a platform that is a non-God based platform. Whereas you can't step off from a platform that's not there. Well, the only way that you'd be defining God there or like, you know, I suppose like one of the main ways you'd be defining God is unnecessary. Which is not really what people mean when they sort of say God. They're not talking about like an unnecessary being. You know, you'd have a contradiction, I think, there perhaps. Well, I mean, yeah, but you can't just define things into. You can't just say, well, yeah, but my God is a necessary being, so therefore it has to exist. Well, I mean, sure, you can, you can say that, but it doesn't really move the argument forward, right? Like, I, I could just say, like, the naturalistic foundation is a necessary existence, right? So therefore, it necessarily exists. Bang, done. You, you're, you're out of here, Faith. You're done. You're done. Right, so obviously when we come to define God, we can only define him as either necessary or not. If not, then we're defining him as unnecessary. But then why would an atheist ask for an argument for an unnecessary being? You see how ridiculous that is? No, no, I'm just saying, like, we can just assert necessity in the same way that you do, right? That, like... I that's just what I'm, I'm highlighting is that like if we both assert necessity, right? Does that mean that like what? What does that mean? It means that like at least one of us has to be wrong, right? Yeah, sure. I like showing them who it is. But look, um, yeah. do you agree? That, yeah, do you agree that no. God is going to be defined as either necessary or not? Is that a true dichotomy? Anything is going to be defined as necessary or not. It's, no, right. but it's the first time we hear right. you now. Uh, so, like, when when an atheist asks for an argument for God, 
generally, I don't think they're asking for an argument for like, you know, a fictional being that doesn't exist. They're asking for an argument for the transcendent necessary being that does exist, right? That's what they that's what they mean. I think. Yeah, well, no, we're, we're, we're asking because we're like working under the either assumption or, or the understanding at least that, um, that you're talking about some kind of being like that, right? That your talk, that your position is such that you believe in there being this, uh, necessary mind at the foundation of existence, right? And like, you know, if they, if, if that's not correct, then they've made an incorrect assumption or they're working on a false understanding. Sure. Well, I mean, what's I mean, the like, point? It, it, is it fair that you, like, you are defining God out of exist, out of existence, right? You're basically trying to define him as like a, an unnecessary, non exist, non existent being from the start kind of thing. Well, no, I'm saying I could, right? I could just define the foundation as that, right? And just say, like, if they're the foundation, it's naturalist because that's what it means to be a foundation is to be naturalistic. Right. So like, I mean, like that just doesn't work face like, because it, you know, the same methodology arrives you at two mutually exclusive conclusions that, that demonstrates that the methodology is unreliable. I mean, obviously when we, but if you, if you're talking about things like nature, um, you know, that which would be securing nature would be before it, right. It would have to be like supernatural in order to secure the set of natural things. Well, not really. I mean, you could just have like an eternal nature and perhaps our nature is perhaps some subset of an eternal nature, right? And then that, like, you wouldn't really call that like supernatural because it would still be natural. It would just be like our universe would be a subset of the, you know, the, the overarching eternal nature, right? Um, <clears throat> well, what would be securing our ability to know that though? That's an epistemological question, face. I mean, are we talking yeah. about how we know things, or are we talking about what could possibly be? I'm just saying that as I you answer one, of logic. It's, it's as you answer one, I realize, oh, this is, has implications for the other. Like, it's, we need a worldview that can tie everything together: space, time, causality, truth, morals, and the puppy dog all have to be accounted for. Well, no, look, see that that's that kind of highlights to me that like you've already started with the problem, right? It kind of sounds to me like. You, you kind of, and I had this discussion with somebody earlier on, and like, I like this. It's like, like a, a reverse, um, is from an ought, right? Sorry, an ought from an is. It's like a, a reverse ought from an is, right? So you start with an ought, and you're trying to get an is out of that, right? In that, like, you have this, uh, you have this impression of how things ought to be. Like, we ought to have, uh, a model of reality that allows for us to be able to, to, you know, to answer X, Y, and Z kind of questions, right? And that's how we ought, that's how, that's how it ought to be, right? Because you want that, right? You want to have that kind of thing. So then, like, you're now, like, saying that because that's what we, it ought to be, right? Like, because that's how things ought to be. It ought to be in a way that, that allows us to have this kind of explanation, because that's what I really like. You've now sort of inferred that that's how it is, right? You kind of bridge the ought, the is ought divide. Right, you've gone from an ought to an is this time. Instead from instead of an is to an ought, you're talking about how you would like things to be, and then you've projected that into how things actually are. But there's no reason to think that just because you would want the world to be in a certain way, so that it can be understood in whichever way you want to understand it, right? That that's actually how the world actually is. So your preferences here really have no demand or like. <clears throat> The well, power to it, influence the ontology of reality. Your epistemological, well, do you think, your epistemological preferences do not do not influence the ontology of reality. Yeah, they don't change the way things are. But obviously, if we both agree on how something should be, then we should be we we should at least uh, you know be able to account for why. You know, in other words, for example, like uh, you know, like we should be able to account for ontology and epistemology. In a Christian worldview, that we can answer these questions. In your view, you're saying what? Like, who cares or something? Or, well, no, I'm saying that, like, yeah. I mean, I think it, I too would like to answer a lot of the questions, right? But like, there are just perhaps certain limitations in which, like, especially like now, right? Like, it may maybe the case that like it's in principle possible to answer all these questions, but like, it, it just it's just the case that right now we can't actually like answer these questions 
and that like we can speculate we can try to like fill in gaps in our understanding with these speculations but that like to actually come to some kind of really sort of demonstrable understanding in the way that we kind of do about the other aspects of the world that we do demonstrably understand at least you know at least to the extent that we can like build the world that we build right um that like we just don't have that face right and and that and if it allows me to be intellectually honest well then that's you know i think that's i think that's key right i think that's a very important factor in actually being able to make progress is to actually take you know care to actually appreciate and acknowledge where you're actually at now so that you can take the right steps in the right direction at the right pace to um to progress in the direction that you wish to and not start like sort of fumbling as you're falling down a mountain or some kind in this analogy right we want to be able to sort of have a controlled understanding of the world around us and not just make these giant leaps of speculation which I we've mean, done in the past we've done it in the past mm-hmm. face we've we've seen the results of that well, right well there's a the thing is that, like, look, if there is no necessary transcendent, all-knowing mind um, that can secure our ability to know things infallibly, everything would be speculation, right? Everything. Well, I mean, look, face it again. You're doing one of these. It seems as though you're just you don't like the consequences of the world being in a particular way, so you're just going to resist that as much as you can. You're going to appeal to some kind of world, uh, some kind of framework in which doesn't allow for you to acknowledge that. So now somehow you're protected from that, right? And you're living in this bubble in which you have this, like, I don't know, infallible sort of sense of the world around you, right? And I don't know, maybe that makes you feel good. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't want to sort of Mm -hmm. 